Colleen is the best. She is the most hateful, shadiest. You can't do anything without offending someone. What's your job description? Like, I am an oh. entertainer. I am a, what, I am a what? Yeah, I'm an actress. I am a singer. I am an idiot, I guess. Uh, I like that. I can't admit it. You sound so stylish. This is who she really is. She uses kids for her own gain. My parents started getting a little bit more cautious and were wondering why a 30 year old was talking to, at this time, a 13 year old. She was on a smear campaign of me. My idol, in every sense of the word, was like actively trying to take me down. Why do the most horrible people at times become the most loved? I love it so much. It was very fun. We were all minors when this happened. Colleen was, you know, in her 30s. We used to have very little insight into the world of the most famous. But with the rise of online stardom, what you say stays online forever. And who you are to your core eventually comes to light. And lately, beloved online celebrity Colleen Ballinger's true nature has come to light. Colleen exploited my minor body for entertainment and money and did not protect my safety. This is who she really is. She uses kids for her own gain. I was a minor and again, she did not protect me. And what has surfaced has been so dark and so scary that there's absolutely no recovering from it. There's no coming back. There is no wiping the dirt and grime and returning back to a clean image. Because is there anything as dark and evil as corrupting children? YouTubers with child audiences carry so much power and even more responsibility. And yet, those who are influencing children, filling their screens, interacting with them online and in real life, are sometimes the most dangerous people, the most insidious, the most manipulative. Lately, there have been allegations that Colleen Ballinger, online celebrity and inspiration to many children, has actually been children, manipulating them, and having children work for her as unpaid interns. So you were saying it's more than tea? Yes. Content creators online are a new situation and the way in which they're able to communicate with their fans is very different than it's ever been. Are we talking about potential crimes? There's also been videos that have leaked online of Colleen treating children very inappropriately at her live shows. And I've also found tons of things that Colleen has done over the years, both online and in person, that are wildly inappropriate and cross so many boundaries that I'll be discussing in this video. There is a pattern here a very disturbing pattern here. And my mind is blown that we did not catch this sooner. This is the real story of Colleen Ballinger, who she is, and how the truth of Colleen Ballinger will absolutely destroy her career. And rightfully should, because who she is is a horrible person who should not be a role model to children. So I murdered a dog. Ah, Carita! I am Rosa, this is my cousin. Mm -hmm. Rena? As a mother, this topic hits very close to home. I will always defend and protect children. And there are so many in this video who have been deeply affected by Colleen. I think it goes without saying, this video is not going to be an easy watch. This will probably be an upsetting video, especially for those who have undergone past trauma and for those who are parents as well. So I just want to issue a general trigger warning for this video. A lot of this is so messed up. Before we get into this more serious video, let's talk about something a little bit more uplifting. Today's video is sponsored by MD Hair. Ever since since giving birth, I've been really struggling with my hair and recently I cut all of my hair off to try and get rid of dead hair and regrow healthier hair with the help of MD Hair. MD Hair is the world's first medical grade hair growth treatment customized to the exact cause and type of hair loss. MD Hair's uniqueness lies in the real customization of their products. Their technology analyzes each person's quiz results 
from their website and analyzes their scalp photo to give a customized treatment kit with the right ingredients according to each person's personal needs. It's really cool to have your scalp analyzed by AI and MD Hair tracks your hair growth progress through time, which can be really cool to see that progress. Based on your quiz results and scalp image analysis, MD Hair will create a treatment kit custom formulated for your specific hair needs. You'll receive customized hair wellness supplements packed with more than 20 different active plant complexes. You'll also receive customized treatment shampoo, which cleanses and stimulates the scalp for healthy hair regrowth. You'll also receive a customized treatment serum supporting a healthier scalp and hair regrowth. I also really love MD Hair's serum and overall saw great results in thickness and volume of my hair as well as the health of my scalp. So customize your hair regrowth treatment with MD Hair. Use my promo code CWHM to get your first month of customized products at 70% off. Use my link in the description below. And thank you so much to MD Hair for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel it really helps me to be able to make important content and shed light about serious topics like this. Colleen Ballinger is mainly known online as her character, Miranda Sings. So that's the lipstick. Mm -hmm. It always goes above and below. Mm -hmm. Give a shake at your smile. A gimmick she started around 2008 that went on to accumulate millions and millions of followers online. She also has a personal channel under her real name where followers could subscribe and get to know the real her. Once Colleen started having children, she started posting more on her Colleen Ballinger channel and her vlogging channel and less on the Miranda Sings channel. Colleen was known to be relatively controversy free, especially when she stopped posting as much Miranda Sings content and branded herself as more of a mommy vlogger. The public perception was that Colleen Ballinger had a relatively clean brand, was generally nice to people, had tons of YouTuber friends, and didn't create any drama. She's so good at being nice to like, she'll do collabs with every YouTuber and they think like, I'm, oh, I'm like Colleen's best friend. And then we get together and I do the same thing, but then we'll get together and oh man, no, they the only shame. knew. But little did everyone know, allegedly, not only was Colleen gossiping about other YouTubers behind their backs the entire time, at least according to Shane Dawson. But a red flag should have been that Colleen was friends with a lot of problematic YouTubers like Trisha Paytas and Shane Dawson. Colleen is the best. She is the most hateful, shadiest, I love her. On top of that, Colleen was acting inappropriate with her child fans the entire time she was in the public eye. There were some subtle clues of this because I'm this is gonna sound so creepy. My answer is so creepy. This is gonna sound so bad. I can't admit this. This sounds so stylish. <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna say this. It leaks so much like a little girl's the public really didn't know about this until former fan Adam McIntyre went public with this information in 2020, backing up a lot of his claims with evidence. In 2016, Colleen and Corey were doing a live stream and they stumbled across my Twitter account. They found my Twitter so funny that they said they needed to send me bra and panties. So I still have this. My mom kept it. I didn't even see these because my mom had just taken them away because they, she was so shocked. So. But the allegations completely fell on deaf ears and were largely drowned out by a ton of backlash from the Miranda Sings fandom. Me, my family, my animals, my friends are all being threatened because of Colleen Ballinger and her actions. It happened to me in 2020, whenever I was like a 17 year old kid and I had to deal with it then. None of the people got any repercussions. But now, three years later, inspired by another YouTube video exposing Colleen and her fandom, Adam has spoken out again in public videos. And Adam's videos have encouraged more and more people to speak out about the mistreatment of Colleen Ballinger against them when they were still minors. And it seems like there's no end in sight. More and more people are sharing their stories and the backlash is mounting. What Adam has spoken about um, in terms of what happened with his situation with Colleen, um, 
I think what hit me so hard is just realizing how many similarities I've had with her. I was 15 years old when all of this started happening. And the stories are absolutely appalling. But before you can really even grasp the magnitude of what Colleen has done to her fans, you have to understand how massive Colleen's career has been. The story of Colleen's rise to fame is almost as fascinating as her massive downfall, considering how many clues are hidden in plain sight as to her true nature and true intentions. I can't this sounds so stylish because I'm I mean really her treatment of fans and some of the creepy things she has done have been there the entire time on top of that Colleen has been branded as a nice and good-natured person <laughs> So it's been shocking to hear people's accounts of her being a truly mean-spirited person. She is the most hateful. But even when you hear about the inspiration of Miranda, you can see her mean-spirited nature was sort of there all along. And it's not like she ever really tried to hide it. So let's start Colleen's story by discussing her rise to fame. Usually, memes or characters will gain popularity on social media for maybe a year or two and then completely die out and most people will forget about them. But the character Miranda Sings went viral in 2008 and stayed popular for a good 10 years, which is a pretty huge and massively successful YouTube career for a meme character to have on the platform. What's your job description? Like, I am oh. an entertainer. I am a... What am I, a what? Yeah. I'm, I'm an actress, I am a singer, what are I you? I am an idiot, I guess. So. I like that. Yeah. What, what's the difference between her and you? Um. <laughs> are you not confident? <laughs> are you not confident? No, I, I mean, I guess I, as I've grown up, I've become more aware of what people think of me yeah. and, you know, how I talk and how I look and all this stuff. But as a child, I didn't care. I was just me and I, I was, you know, if someone says you look pretty, you're like, thank you, I know, when you're a kid. And I think Miranda just never grew out of that phase. Who knew that a gimmick and a meme character like Miranda Sings could go on to create such a massive career for Colleen Ballinger, who would go on to tour selling out theaters with millions of child fans, who would send her artwork, buy her Miranda Sings merch, watch her Miranda Sings music videos. And watch her on stage for hours. I would have never thought that a meme as simple as Miranda Sings would go on to last for a 10 year long career like that. The concept behind Miranda Sings is supposed to be a woman who is comically talentless. <laughs> A misguided and quirky character who makes videos on her Miranda Sings YouTube channel. In these videos, the character of Miranda Sings is often eccentric. Mm -hmm. Give us a your smile. Very egotistical, could be described as narcissistic. I also swept my dance card once after an audition. On a scale of 10, they gave me four dance, 10 but so unaware of their bad qualities that it could often be seen as endearing. In most videos, Miranda sings and dances badly. Or gives bad tutorials. When you are wearing it today. So every time I do my makeup like this, my uncle says I look beautiful. Collabs with other YouTubers. Miranda? <laughs> or reads her hate mail with her famous catchphrase, haters back off. If you're a hater, this song's for you. Colleen based the character Miranda Sings partly on some of the YouTube videos that she saw of arrogant singers who thought that posting on YouTube was going to make them famous, but they were just 
really bad singers. I was posting like random YouTube videos of me singing and I saw like related videos of like these teenage girls posting the same songs that I had sung in performance but alone in their bedroom. Acapella. Acapella, um, changing lyrics and doing whatever they wanted with them. And they were terrible but they were so cocky and on their YouTube pages in their profile they'd be like, I'm doing this to become famous. And I was like, that's so ridiculous. No one gets famous from YouTube. And that's you, um, Justin Bieber, but whatever. <laughs> right, well, <laughs> exactly. She also based the character on some young woman she knew in the performance department of her college, Azusa Pacific University. She told the Times of London, there were a lot of cocky girls who thought they were really talented and they were so rude and snotty, it drove me nuts. Then I saw all these girls trying to make a career out of putting videos on YouTube, clueless to the fact they were terrible. So basically, the entire character of Miranda Sings was created to make fun of women who thought they were good at singing, but who Colleen actually thought were terrible at singing. And Miranda Sings was Colleen's way of embodying all those women and making fun of them. Basically telling them, how silly of you to think that you're gonna post on YouTube and get famous for it. I'll show you, I'm gonna post on YouTube making fun of you, turn that into a gimmick character and get famous off of that. I mean, isn't that so mean? The Miranda Sings YouTube channel has more than 2 billion views and 10 million subscribers. And the Miranda Sings character has accumulated more than 12 million TikTok followers and 6 million Instagram followers. Since 2009, in addition to her internet videos, Colleen has presented her character in live comedy acts. <laughs> At first in cabaret spaces and later in theaters in New York, London, and other cities across the US and in Canada, Europe, Australia, and elsewhere, and is toured regularly since 2014. To the wall, to the wall. One of Miranda Sings' 2018 tours was filmed as a 2019 Netflix comedy special. The character Miranda Sings has also appeared in television, in a web series, and tons of other media. Miranda Sings' first network television appearance was in a 2012 episode of the TV show Victorious. In 2014, Miranda Sings guest starred in character on an episode of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee with Jerry Seinfeld and appeared on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Could you get into character? You want me you... to become Miranda? So right is that now. possible? Could you just Yeah, do I can do it. You were a totally different person. You were a totally different person than someone who was just sitting here a minute ago. Jimmy, it's been a while. In 2015, Miranda Sings released a self-help book that was written in Miranda Sings' voice titled Self Health or Self Self health that went on to be a New York Times number one bestseller. Now remember, Miranda Sings' audience is a mainly children's audience. And from what I can gather, this book could have been a good opportunity to genuinely help kids. There are a lot of issues that are unique to children, you know, the school system and social situations, social media, and navigating that whole world, which is something that's uniquely new to younger generations, all of those things. It doesn't seem like Miranda's book tackles any of that and is instead just um, entirely inappropriate and very odd. How to draw a hot dog. So it teaches you how to draw a hot dog when it's supposed to look like a vagina. The fifth step is to add ketchup. And I wanted ketchup on the page, but we forgot to add it and so, cause I wanted to look like a nasty with blood on it because I'm I really wanted a page that had a on tape to it. I just thought it would be funny and it was just something I had in my head of like a page that had no information on it, just tampon tape to it and a pad slapped in. I thought it would be really funny. I think that the title was very deliberate. It's sort of meant to be misleading. In my opinion, the title was meant to mislead parents into thinking that the book was helpful in any way and was going to help their children. But instead, it's just wildly inappropriate and random and useless as a book. <laughs> 
from what I've seen of it. And yet, even so, it looks like a ton of parents ended up buying it for their children. And the book went on to be a New York Times number one bestseller. Miranda Sings also went on to be the main character in the Netflix original series, Haters Back Off, that ran from 2016 to 2017, but was canceled after two seasons. It also has very mixed ratings, but in general wasn't rated very well and has only a 50% score on Rotten Tomatoes. With a critic consensus stating, haters back off is bizarre, painful, and oftentimes excruciatingly funny, yet the appeal of the YouTube transport doesn't quite carry over in the longer television format. And it's so sad to me because Angela from The Office is in haters back off and they did her so dirty with it. But again, Colleen Ballinger was hailed as a role model for children. She won a Teen Choice Award and a Streamy Award for her Miranda Sings videos. Your choice web star comedy is Colleen Bollinger and Miranda Sings. which when you win a Teen Choice Award, you are in a way held up as a role model for children. And Colleen Ballinger went on to have success outside of social media and YouTube and had a career in mainstream media. Colleen was a guest co-host on The View in 2015. The same year she was interviewed on the podcast RuPaul What's the Tea. She starred in a Todd Call video, Beauty and the Beat Boots. Colleen appeared in a series of 2016 DiGiorno pizza commercials. In 2018, she appeared as the disco dancer in season three of the web series Escape the Night. She had a cameo role in the animated film Ralph Breaks the Internet, and she appeared in the Ariana Grande music video Thank You Next. And she made her Broadway debut in the musical Waitress as Dawn, where she appeared from August to September in 2019. In the week of Ballinger's debut, the box office grossed for the musical increased by 358,000 to 900,000 and continued to rise, going to show the massive effects of Colleen's fan base. On Halloween in 2020, Ballinger played Janet in a live stream reading of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. In 2021, Colleen voiced the role of Crandy on the Netflix animated series, Centaur World. So Colleen Ballinger has accomplished a ton and has a hugely successful career. Colleen has amassed a large following and I think a lot of Colleen's accomplishments can be attributed to her dedicated fan base who appreciated her sense of humor and loved the character she developed. And this fan base followed all of her endeavors, whether she was Miranda Sings, Colleen Ballinger, or any other character she would play. So this large of a career in media, performing shows, writing books, having a Netflix show, you have to wonder how much has Colleen made and what is her net worth? Colleen Ballinger has stated that out of all of her professional activities, she gets the most satisfaction in her career off of her live performances. <laughs> When she tours, of course, she has to have a crew of people, a tour bus, stage managers, and all of that. But there's also so much money to be had through performing live. Not only can you sell merch at live events, but there's a huge scale of tickets. There's some tickets that Colleen Ballinger sells that are as expensive as $200 or $300. The amount of money you can make off of live performances adds up really quickly. Colleen's tour in 2020 was scheduled to go to 20 different locations. So imagine how much she could make off of that. It's a lot. A lot of children buying tickets with their parents, buying merch at the events as well. And recently, there have been reports of Colleen selling canceled merch during her recent tour. But of course, apart from Colleen's live shows, most of Colleen's income came from her YouTube channels where she has more than 2,000 videos. She has more than 2 million Twitter followers from Miranda Sings and 1.7 million followers for Colleen Ballinger and has been really brilliant at almost doubling her following and income by creating both 
the Miranda Sings accounts and the Colleen Ballinger accounts. BuzzFeed called Miranda the queen of Twitter. In 2016, Forbes magazine ranked Colleen Ballinger as the ninth highest earning YouTuber. And since 2021, Colleen Ballinger and her husband, Eric Stockland, have streamed weekly podcasts titled Relax with Colleen and Eric on Apple Podcasts and posted them to a YouTube channel with the same name. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Colleen has a net worth of over 12 million. That is all due to her intensely loyal fan base. Even though Colleen has scoffed at the notion that she's worth that much, I personally believe she might be worth a lot more than that. With the amount of touring that she's done, being a New York Times number one bestseller, going on multiple worldwide tours over the years, having two channels that have over 10 million subscribers, a Netflix show, merch, doing a Broadway show, other things she's participated in in media. I mean, just off the numbers I've gathered in my head, I'm looking at other YouTubers in comparison and their net worth. I think she could be worth even more than the estimated net worth, but that's just my opinion. And why is this all so important to bring up? Because Colleen became this rich off of the devotion of her child fans her child fans, the children that bought her books, the children who watched her YouTube videos, watched her Netflix shows, the children who bought her tickets or asked their parents to and went to her live shows. Her answer's on Lane, but at least she ties Colleen's corner. I love her so much. She's my favorite. She's my favorite. She's my favorite. <laughs> But the thing is, this tight relationship with fans, this level of dedication is something that Colleen learned how to manipulate and how to take advantage of all for her own personal gain. And she learned how to abuse it in really sick ways. And recently it all came to light and her public image completely shattered. And this is where things become really twisted. So trigger warning. Colleen Ballinger has been accused of grooming, manipulating, and bullying underage fans. But the thing is, the allegations that came out this year in 2023, Adam McIntyre had already tried to bring public in 2020. Looking back as a 17 year old, I'm just really disgusted at the situation but fans had suppressed through a wave of backlash and bullying against him. It's now been confirmed that she was on a smear campaign of me. So let's bring it back to 2020 and the original video that Adam posted. Three years ago, I posted a video titled Colleen Ballinger, Stop Lying, in which I described the emotionally abusive end to my friendship, not a real one in theory, with YouTuber Colleen Ballinger. The video response was quickly turned against me and I was villainized and bullied for three solid years, which takes a lot of bravery to make a video calling out someone that you know has tens of millions of fans backing them. So back in 2020, when Adam McIntyre made this video, Adam said he first discovered Colleen Ballinger as Miranda Sings in 2012 and instantly became a fan of her, but he was a very young child at the time. He claimed that in 2016, he and Colleen Ballinger started talking on a more personal level and became good friends at the time. Adam was 13 and Colleen Ballinger was in her 30s. My parents started getting a little bit more cautious and were wondering why a 30 year old was talking to, at this time, a 13 year old. So already, Adam was 13 years old and Colleen Ballinger was in her 30s and there is proof of them talking on a friendship level. What? I mean, I understand being nice and polite, but to talk on any personal level beyond that? What? So in this video, Adam calls out Colleen Ballinger's toxic behavior and toxic friendship, where she discussed personal details of her life with him when he was a child this slowly turned into me getting private details about her divorce and what was happening with the relationship with her ex-husband. But above all, the most shocking thing that Adam said in his video was that Colleen Ballinger sent him a minor lingerie during their friendship. 
and when he was a fan. In 2016, Colleen and Corey were doing a live stream and they stumbled across my Twitter account. They found my Twitter so funny that they said they needed to send me bra and panties that Corey was wearing during the live stream. Which as an adult looking at this, anyone can see that that is inappropriate. It doesn't matter if it's a joke. It doesn't matter if it's a mistake. There is no way to interpret that other than completely inappropriate. What had happened was Colleen was opening up clothes on a live stream, had opened up long was sending things out as giveaways and decided to send out this long way to Adam as a giveaway. Here are some clips from that live stream. <laughs> oh my god, that makes me laugh. I want to send him something. Do you want the bra, Adam? <laughs> Adam, do you want the bra? Sweet right now. So I did get sent the long way and immediately whenever it arrived, my parents were furious. They were so angry and they took it away. And I didn't know if they still had it. And I asked my mom, did she have it? Because she knew I was making this video. So she was looking all morning, but she did find it. So this was what I was sent. These, I don't know which way they go, but these as well. So that was a big warning sign, but because I was so young, I didn't take it. Naive. Again, wildly, wildly inappropriate. What? In what world can you look at that and think that that's an okay thing to do? Again, Adam was a minor. This would be weird if Adam was an adult. It still would be kind of weird because you're sending someone that you don't know and have never even met long day that you owned, you're sending that person, which is weird. But this is a minor that you don't know that you've never met. Looking back as a 17 year old, I'm just really disgusted at the situation and confused honestly i've included a video that is now on private on my channel but it is me talking about what happened whenever i met colleen back in 2016. had a conversation oh no 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 i remember what happened we walked up and whenever i was hugging her she said i'm so sorry i didn't bring your ray yeah because uh in her live stream she said she wanted to send me her ray and my parents were right behind me so thanks for that colleen what why? Oh my gosh. How did no one catch this? How did we never know this was happening? While Adam's video initially went viral in 2020, the video was met with a lot of backlash from Colleen Ballinger's fans. And then the controversy died down and was seemingly silenced a few days after Colleen Ballinger released her response video titled Addressing Everything. Recently, some things have come up that I feel like I need to address. And so I just wanted to sit down and have an honest conversation with you and address everything at once. So let's get started. Colleen claimed it took her so long to make a response video because she messaged Adam privately. Someone had made a video saying some shocking and hurtful things about me and a lot of you wanted me to address it and I didn't. I didn't address it, not because I was just ignoring it and hoping it would go away, but because when this person messaged me letting me know they were upset, I responded immediately. I was very shocked and confused. I expressed I didn't know what they were talking about. Because Colleen had such a larger following than Adam did, this response video actually worked. And a lot of people bought what Colleen had to say at the time in 2020 and a lot of Colleen's supporters seemed to have silenced Adam's criticisms, which now Adam claims was just a complete smear campaign by Colleen. Like my idol in the, in every sense of the word, uh, was like actively trying to take me down. And the icing on the cake was Colleen saying in her video, I care about Adam so much, just like I care about all my fans that I've interacted with over the years. And I wish him nothing but success and happiness and love. I feel like if you really cared about Adam so much, you just wouldn't have made a response video. You know that making a response video like this was going to send bullying, hate, harassment Adam's way. So did you really care about Adam so much? Because you knew that he was going to get targeted bullying for years after making this video. On top of all of that, Colleen claimed that the lingerie she sent Adam was just a joke. The biggest issue that came from his video is that I sent a child underwear and 
wow, anyone who heard this out of context and was offended, I completely understand because I would be too. Four years ago, I did a live stream and in this live stream, I did a giveaway. I was giving away clothes that were unused, tags still on, brand new, that I had just bought that I did not want. One of the items that was in this box was a really ugly pair of, and then this boy who made this video about me recently, he asked for the, it was so ridiculous and funny, we laughed about it. I sent them to him, he put them on over his clothes and posted about them. It was like a big joke within the fandom. Okay, explain the joke. Explain, what is it? What What's the joke? Please explain it to me. I'd love to know what you think the joke is here. So ultimately, Adam McIntyre's video was completely overshadowed by Colleen Ballinger's response video. That is until another YouTuber by the name of Cody Rance came forward about their own experience with Colleen Ballinger. And Cody's video ended up backing up many of Adam's initial claims that Colleen was acting inappropriately with her child fans behind the scenes, providing screenshots of messages that show Ballinger allegedly talking in a group chat that included both minors and adults. I did not know at the time that there were minors in these group chats. Cody said in their video, Video titled why I left the Colleen Ballinger fandom. The video has since been privated but has been re-uploaded and reacted to in other videos that are still live on YouTube. Cody has admitted that they were an adult while participating in these group chats. I should have done the research on this so I want to apologize to any child who was in these group chats. I should not have been in a group chat with you. While I appreciate Cody for making this video, because it did shed light on the fact that Colleen Ballinger and those closest to her have been participating in group chats with fans who were minors and sending very, very inappropriate messages. And I appreciate Cody going public with this information. I do also feel like it's very easy to know when you're talking to a child in a group chat. I feel like it's very easy to find that information out. If you're in a group chat, and you don't know the ages of people, you can ask. You can also just find out by the manner in which people are talking. And also if you're unsure, then you can leave that group chat. If you're in a group chat and there's adults and minors, that's already very, very uncomfortable. Why? Maybe let's just not do that. But it's a whole other thing when you're in a group chat, you're unsure of the ages of the people in that group chat. And then all of a sudden, the topics of the conversations in that group chat becomes very, very inappropriate. She was literally in DMs talking to children about SEX. Are you a virgin? This is Colleen in a group chat with children. They're called the weenies. What's your favorite position? And that's exactly what happened in the group chats with Colleen Ballinger. The messages that have been leaked with the Colleen Ballinger group chats with her underage fans have been the most inappropriate messages I have ever seen between an influencer and their underage fans. Any adult who is participating in those group chats is at fault. So while I appreciate Cody for coming forward with this information because it's vital for exposing this to light, they do have some blame in this for participating in it. In their video, Cody shared more screenshots of Colleen Ballinger allegedly asking underage fans inappropriate questions, asking people if they're virgins or what their favorite sex position is, asking people what their thoughts were when they got their first period. So Cody's video seem to corroborate what Adam was saying in 2020. So since Cody's video has come out, Adam has posted multiple videos. The most enlightening videos being two videos titled, I was right about Colleen Ballinger and my relationship with Colleen Ballinger. In these videos, Adam provides more information about his relationship with Colleen Ballinger. Adam claimed that Colleen would create a toxic environment with her younger viewers, encouraging them to bully her ex-husband, former friends, and other fans. For anyone who's a fan of Colleen Ballinger, they make fun of you behind the scenes. They make fun of your appearance. They make fun of things you do. I know because I was also with them doing it. Adam claimed that in these group chats and between their private messages, Colleen would constantly 
make fun of her own fans behind the scenes and even use the word squeens as a way to bash her own fans. Squeent was a word that she used to make fun of fans that were like really, really, really like annoying and like overly just like, so that's her going, sorry to be all squeent on you. I don't understand this psychology and behavior behind it. Why would you hate your own fans so much that you develop a term for them because of how much you hate them? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you just don't understand anyone who would like you. The biggest example that Adam used of this that really stood out in my mind is that Colleen constantly made fun of someone who got a tattoo in her honor. We all used to, with a Sharpie and a pen, literally redo the tattoo and make fun of her and make fun of her mental health for being like, why would someone want to do that? And Colleen would partake in those conversations. Colleen would partake in those conversations about someone who loved her so much who got a tattoo and it's been covered up now anyway. Which is, horrific and also as someone who has tattoos in my opinion that's just not her place unless it's an offensive tattoo which i think goes without saying other fans also corroborated that colleen would talk poorly of other fans and badmouth fans on twitter fans shared personal accounts of this happening and how colleen would do similar things with them in one particular incident a fan shared a story about how colleen thought one fan faked a chronic illness to get closer to her and even told someone she was writing a screenplay about a fan faking an illness to get closer to a star, which is just a very deranged thing to do in my opinion. Colleen would love bomb Adam to get him to defend her online against any backlash. I genuinely mean that. I'm proud of you. Just bombing me with love because she wanted me to defend her on social media. By basically continually telling him that he's special to her. Around the 30 minute mark in his video, Adam shares alleged text messages Colleen sent him, calling him her sunflower, my happiness, my everything. She would tell him that she cares about him, but now he believes that she never really did. She didn't mean any of this. At this time, I spent my night harassing people on this gossip site for saying that she doesn't care about her fans because look she loves me she loves me she would also get him to go on gossip sites and basically dig up whatever dirt they were saying about her and her ex-husband she would then get him to defend her on those sites and on twitter our relationship slowly turned into me always being asked to go find drama for her, whether it was about josh ex-friends or fans and in 2016 to 2018 i was always asked to follow along gossip sites now the gossip sites were talking about her ex-husband and hers relationship and the divorce. And I was very much so made to follow along with that and then feed back that information and what they were talking about. Like her own personal online soldier, except for he was a literal child, a loyal child soldier, which is such a cruel thing to use a child fan for. I mean, that's basically what she was using him for as a way to get gossip on what people were saying about her and then go and attack those people to safeguard her reputation online. Gossip Garden used to bully the shit out of me because I was a kid defending her and they would make fun of everything to do with me. She didn't care that I was getting backlash. She didn't care I was getting bullied. She didn't care that I was, you know, a kid was getting harassed online because she wasn't doing it herself. She was not the one getting the backlash. Adam lives in Ireland and at one point Colleen was doing a show in Dublin. So Colleen and Adam were planning to meet up in Dublin. At the time, Adam was only 15 and Colleen was in her 30s. They decided beforehand that while at the show, Adam would participate in one of the audience segments. So Colleen and Adam decided that Adam would do the water challenge. Adam shared a clip from the show where Colleen did the water challenge with him, which involved spitting water at his face, despite him being a minor at the time. Oh, hey, what's up? Hi, what's your name? Adam. Adam, how are you? I'm good. Oh, good talk. Okay, <laughs> I like your pants. They're very invisible. <laughs> what? Just for you. Oh, he's a flirt. <laughs> um, so, you guys all wanna be famous on YouTube? Yes is the answer. Um, do you wanna be on YouTube? I'm already on it. Oh, okay. Sassy. Can I be the new bae? You want to be the new bae? I have that competition. So you already, so you have a YouTube channel. Okay, what's that? I don't care. <laughs> Let's see if you're actually.
actually a famous YouTuber, okay? Because we're all about to become famous YouTubers right now. Afterwards, the initial plan was for Adam and Colleen to meet at the Wax Museum and spend the day together. But Colleen changed the plans last minute to just grabbing lunch together. And then I go, my parents are so mad, and she goes, wait. Are your parents coming? What's happening? I'm confused. Because the worst thing for Colleen is for my parents to be there because she can't talk to me inappropriately. Um, and then she goes, Jesus, where are you? So literally right after that is now complaining that I'm not getting there on time, which is why they then didn't hang out with me for any longer than five minutes. She goes, where are you? Your lunch is here. I'm on my way. And kept texting him, where are you? Then texted him that they were leaving the restaurant. And then I'm like, oh my God, y'all are going to be done. I'm sorry. And she goes, yeah, we are. LOL, I have to leave in 10 to 15, but you can walk with me to my hotel, which by the way, was next door. And ultimately she left Adam completely alone in Dublin at the age of 15 after giving him incorrect instructions on where to meet her. According to Adam, it basically seemed like the whole meeting was a farce that she held over his head to get him to do favors for her, like go on online gossip forums and defend her. So this thing that had been hung over my head for so long, for me, harassing people online, bullying people online, defending her, saying, I mean, slandering her ex-husband, this was this meeting of going to the wax museum, going to the park, and then going for food. Now I'm not even going to food with her after doing all of that for her. And that she never really intended on spending the day with him in the first place, which is so sad. I felt abandoned in a city I did not know, Adam said. So you're probably wondering... Why did Colin Ballinger develop such a close relationship with Adam McIntyre? What was the purpose of this? Feeding him information about her personal life, telling him he's special, not like her other fans who she allegedly sometimes hates and makes fun of. Sending him personal items of hers, stringing him along, telling him that she's going to spend personal time with him. Well, another shocking aspect of Adam's relationship relationship with Colleen Ballinger that he brought to light was when Adam spoke about the amount of free, completely unpaid work that Adam did for Colleen Ballinger when he was a child. Yes, that's right. When Adam was a child, not an adult yet, he did free work for Colleen. And according to Adam, he had done free work for Colleen from the years of 2017 to 2020 and never got credited for it. So Adam doing free work for Colleen all starts out with her saying, now that I have a child, I don't want to do any Miranda Sings work anymore. She goes, I can't keep up with being a mom and running all my social medias and my YouTube channel. So I have to pick one and I enjoy me more than Miranda. So I always pick that one. So this was now her saying that she was giving up on Miranda. She already knows that Miranda Sings is like his idol, his icon that he'd been following since he was like 11 years old. So hearing that Colleen doesn't want to post as Miranda Sings anymore had to have been like devastating for Adam to hear. She would actively say that she was struggling with the character and I wanted to help my friend out. What did I do? I was stupid and naive. And Adam is only 16 years old at this time. This was 2020, so I would have been, it was whenever I was 16, 17. And Colleen is in her 30s. So Adam suggests, if you don't wanna, you know, post as Miranda Sings, I can do that for you. I was so excited. I felt like I had a job. And there were so many conversations on Snapchat where she told me that once I got out of college, that this was going to be my job. And he just starts sending her a bunch of suggestions. And all of them are really, really good suggestions. For instance, he made multiple edits featuring Miranda Sings alongside Britney Spears and Dua Lipa. Miranda Sings with Animal Crossing, which was really popular at the time. And Adam said that in many instances, the Miranda Sings edits would go viral because of the content that he created or devised. And I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. Why did I give her? Why did I give her everything? Why did I give her so many ideas? Why did I give her my work? Why did I edit these? Why did like so Colleen handed him her Twitter password and told him to go crazy. I was talking to all of her fans as her. You've made my night pretty great. It would be even better if you followed me. Love you. Bye. And then I responded and followed her. You've been so active today, Miranda. I'm living for it. 
You're so active today. I've been having a really rough week, the roughest, and you're making me smile. Thank you so much. Another one, I love you so much, Miranda. Thank you, thank you, thank you for basically me interacting with the fans and tweeting them as Miranda and following them and DMing them. Adam said, looking back now, he felt really stupid for giving her so much free work over the years that he literally never got paid for. Why was I doing this for her? Why was I doing this for her? He thought that he had a friend, that he was so special to this person that he idolized and looked up to for years. So whenever she needed work, she knew that she could go to him and manipulate him whenever she wanted to, making him feel like he was special, her number one. He was the perfect person to groom into doing free social media work. And unfortunately, he ended up doing a lot of social media work for free. I never got credit. I never, never, never got credit. And there are so many viral moments of Miranda Sings that I have not gotten credit for. Adam claims that Colleen promised to employ him once he graduated college. In one alleged message, Colleen tells Adam, right now I'm considering you my social media intern, but if things go well, we can talk about hiring you part-time for an hourly rate. I don't like using your creativity and insight for free. Just know I'm not planning on taking advantage of your help. I'm planning on making it more official if it works out that way. How does that sound, Queen? But remember, Adam is only 16 years old at this time, and he's running a Twitter account with like 2 million followers. And it's the first time that he's done something like that before. And Colleen has offered him zero guidance on how to do this. She just said, I'm overwhelmed you do this. There are a lot of things that comes with running an account that has a large fan base, things that a 16 year old just might not know about. And unfortunately, a particular post that Adam made on Colleen's Miranda Singh's Twitter account received backlash for queer baiting. So nice when things crumble, crumble. She sends me this tweet. Someone says, I don't care that Miranda's a troll. Queer baiting isn't funny or a joke at Colleen B123. She goes, uh oh, am I gonna get in trouble? Be careful. I don't wanna be in a scandal and have to apologize. And here's when I start stressing out because I'm like, I've lost the potential job and she's not gonna trust me. And I've lost my friend. In 2020, the Miranda Sings Twitter account posted a satirical coming out tweet promising a big announcement, which later revealed Miranda Sings simply admitting she was a Megan Trainer fan. This was actually Adam's idea that Colleen claimed she never approved. But I'm so glad everything is doing well, but even though you have the password, I need to approve everything you post to avoid problems. But she actually approved not just one time, but three different times in their messages. And the Megan Trainer tweets that I sent you of you coming out as a Megan Trainer fan with those edited pictures. And she goes, when should I do that? She has now gotten me to reiterate this tweet three times and has now said, when should I post it? When the coming out controversy didn't die down, Colleen allegedly turned on Adam, continued to guilt trip him, at one point writing, queer baiting is not a joke. I have upset so many people. I am near tears. I'm really upset. I never would post something like that. And now everyone thinks I'm homophobic. Which is kind of funny because Colleen has queer baited in the past. A uh, YouTube lover three said, my friend wants to know how to come out to their parents, please help. I think the best way to help someone through an issue like this is to share your own personal experience. So um, I'm gonna talk about my coming out story. When I was, I think I was like 17. I sat down with my mom and actually she found out. She found out about it from someone else and then sat me down and asked me, like totally confronted me and I was really embarrassed and shy and I was like, yes, it's true, I am dating a boy and I'm straight. I know that might have seemed insensitive to some of you guys, but it wasn't meant to be. It was meant to show how ridiculous 
that was. I think it is just as ridiculous to have to come out as gay. And Adam is 16 years old. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the post was a right post to make. I'm not saying that queer baiting is a right thing to do, obviously. But again, Adam is 16 years old at this time. It was Colleen's responsibility and should have never been put on him in the first place. Despite Adam running all posts through Colleen beforehand and having her approve everything through their messages and explaining all the posts to her. Once she received backlash for one of the posts, she claimed that he never ran it by her and then ghosted him, told everyone in her fan base that he was out to get her and blamed him for all the negative reception that she was receiving. She ignores me for a very long time after this. I get cut off. So from here to here, she stops messaging me, she stops interacting with me, and her and Corey start writing in other group chats that I'm not a part of, that I was running hate pages for her, that I was trying to take down her account, that I was behind everything, that I have it out for her, that I'm not a nice person. So not only did, have I lost a friend and lost a job, but I've now gained someone who's trying to like take me down. And this was before I ever posted any video. A 30 something year old bullying a 16 year old in group chats? Spreading rumors that a 16 year old is out to get her? Instead of taking responsibility and just saying you made a bad call, that you made a bad professional mistake. Like a dang adult. I mean, what a creepy thing to do. What a creepy thing to do. So Colleen ghosted Adam and allegedly began talking about him and spreading lies about him behind his back, which he eventually found out about and confronted her about. His mom even got involved and messaged Colleen and told her to never speak her son's name again. That's a good mom right there. I just feel so horrible for Adam and his family and that they had to endure this. Because Adam doesn't live in the US, I don't know legally if Colleen will be held accountable to any of this, but at least I know accountability wise, a lot of people will not forget this. And I know Adam is speaking his voice and that is an incredible thing. And I know so many people are so proud of him for speaking out. Since the resurfacing of these allegations, many former fans have apologized to Adam McIntyre for dismissing his claims in 2020 and are showing their support for him now. Basically what has ended up happening is something I never thought would happen, which is the Colleen Ballinger fandom are actually speaking up in my defense and they are actually speaking up against their own stories against Colleen and Corey and the Ballinger family and it is something I never thought I would ever see, especially back in 2020 whenever I posted that original video. So far, Colleen Ballinger has lost more than 30,000 subscribers and it looks like the decline isn't slowing down anytime soon. The sickest thing about this, the sickest thing about this is that Colleen put on a mask and pretended to be a safe person. She pretended to be a safe brand for children that parents could trust for their children to watch, for their children to attend her live shows a mommy vlogger, a safe and trustworthy brand, not problematic. You can buy your child her book. You can let your children watch her YouTube videos. And yet, in reality, you couldn't trust your children around her. She didn't respect boundaries. She didn't respect the sanctity of childhood. And she didn't treat children like children. And it gets even worse with more allegations coming to light. After Adam posted his videos and spoke with some people from the group chats who were able to corroborate the information, another person came out recently who alleged that Colleen had treated them very similarly. What Adam has spoken about in terms of what happened with his situation with Colleen, I think what hit me so hard is just realizing how many similarities I've had with her throughout our friendship, work experiences. These similarities in the situations 
are jarring. YouTube channel Gemini John posted a video titled, There's More to the Story, My Experience with Colleen Ballinger, where John alleged that Colleen also began an inappropriate relationship with him when he was 15 years old as well. It's really gross and it's wrong. It's disgusting. I was 15 years old when all of this started happening and that has been acknowledged. And hearing John's story, I'm starting to see a pattern with the people that Colleen Ballinger targets, particularly with doing work for her. Colleen seems to target young boys specifically who are kind of loners or bullied at school or maybe don't have a ton of friends. Me being a kid who had no friends, who got bullied out of school, who was just looking for some form of connection with people. And, and the fact that I found that with people I idolized and like had this community, it, it was addicting. I didn't want to lose that. Up until recently, I have still been protecting these people because I wanted to believe that the connections I had with them, the friendships, um, the interactions, they were authentic and they were genuine, but they just never were. I don't know a lot about Adam, but for Adam to have done so much work for Colleen at such a young age, to me means maybe he didn't have a massive social life outside of social media, which same. And John seems to have been the exact same way. Their stories just seem to have a lot of parallels to each other. And it makes me wonder almost if Colleen targets a certain type of person. John worked on the Miranda Sings tour in 2018. I worked for Colleen on the Miranda Sings bus tour 2018 and claims he was bullied and tormented on the daily. I was bullied, <laughs> tormented on the daily. He says he eventually got his room access revoked. Uh, eventually got my room access revoked. And it sounds like overall, through his account of things, his spirit was completely broken down. Also, according to John, Colleen's ex-husband did the exact same thing to him that Colleen did to Adam, telling John that he was special to him and having him run his social media accounts for him for free. I eventually had run accounts for characters for you that you asked me to run as a minor n not paid and and don't act like you didn't really care about these accounts this account didn't really mean anything to you because i know well how much you love attention so to me, what this tells me at least is this wasn't some sort of one-off oopsies that Adam stumbled into, that Colleen mistakenly developed a wrong relationship with just one fan, which of course we know with the group chat messages that have been leaked, but John's story also additionally confirms that. John's corroboration of Adam's story tells me that Colleen and her colleagues, friends, and even ex-husband all developed a system and systematic way of basically grooming and exploiting fans in order to get as much out of them as possible and use them as much as possible. It's evil. And the fans were shocked that Colleen has been doing such toxic and harmful things behind the scenes. But really, should they have been? Because what a former fan came public with next was something that had been happening in the public eye this entire time. A TikTok posted on June 14th by No It's Becky alleges that Colleen humiliated and exploited minors for entertainment on her live shows. Hi, okay, my name is Becky. I'm the girl in this video, so I want to explain this. So I was a fan of Colleen and all the Ballinger family for a very, very long time. And I think in this video, I was about 16. In the video, Becky explains that she was a former fan that attended one of Colleen's live shows when she was 16 years old in the hopes of getting called on stage for a particular bit. <laughs> The 
the then teenager wore a short floral romper. If you've never been to a Miranda show, Colleen frequently has segments where she calls people up on stage. But that's why I was kind of trying to dress skimpy so that I would be called up on stage and basically get degraded by Miranda. So Becky thought that if she wore this romper, she was going to get called up for that bit. And while Becky did get called up for a bit, it was not the bit she anticipated. Instead, Becky ended up getting called up for the yoga challenge. This involved Colleen contorting the young teenager's body for the audience's amusement. I got called up for the yoga challenge. Now, as soon as I stood up from the audience, I saw Colleen's eyes widen because she realized I was not wearing pants. But for some reason, that didn't stop her from continuing. In fact, no adult at any point stepped in in this situation. So we get to the point in the yoga challenge where I am laying down and Colleen is spreading my legs basically as far as she can. So she spreads them so far that you can see the spandex I was wearing under my romper, which thank God I was wearing. And trigger warning this is gonna be upsetting. In the video, which has been posted to Twitter and TikTok, I'm gonna blur it as much as possible. In this video, Colleen, who is known for calling fans on stage, is seen standing over Becky, who's lying on her back in front of the audience. Colleen pushed the girl's legs apart as far as she can. A fart noise is then played over the speakers and Colleen runs away in disgust as the girl quickly gathers her short dress to cover herself up. <laughs> The whole bit here was that I farted while in this position, which is one, really childish, and two, effing embarrassing when you're already in a vulnerable position. I was only a teenager here, and you can see that I had to stop to cover myself up before I even stood up. I'm so sick of people being okay with calling Colleen out, but then stopping when it comes to using certain terminology. It's okay to call her a groomer and a because that's what she is. Normal people don't do what she does to children. I think the most accurate statement there is normal people do not do what she does to children. In what world would a normal person see a child in a short romper and think it's okay to pull their legs apart when they're on stage in front of an audience, a sea of an audience of people and not even stop to wonder if that would scar that person. Becky described in her TikTok how how she will never forget where I was laying under Colleen and she was smirking down at me while thousands of people are laughing. That is the moment I will never forget where I was laying under Colleen and she was smirking down at me while thousands of people were laughing and I was terrified that my body wasn't covered enough up enough by the spandex or the romper. I basically felt naked so it felt incredibly sexually violating. I was younger and my body was still developing and I was still becoming comfortable with myself so for her to use my body as entertainment on stage really set um, my confidence back quite a lot. Becky slammed Colleen for using her minor body for entertainment and money. And not to mention after all this, after the show, I had to walk back to my car where there was many men staring at me in a very pictorial way that they were not looking at me before because of how exposed I had been on stage. So I literally did not feel safe leaving the venue. Colleen did not protect my safety at this show. This was a pretty scary situation for my teenage self. This was really pretty scary for my teenage self and especially someone who loved and looked up to Colleen. And I could never say anything because everybody loved her. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about taking your kids to a Miranda show, I would advise you to think twice because you may come back with years of trauma and I don't wish that on anyone. Imagine the person that you loved and looked up to did this to you in front of hundreds of people. Becky added that she felt like she couldn't say anything at the time because Colleen was so beloved, which is mind boggling to me because as more and more comes out, I don't understand how none of us caught this. The reaction to the video and Becky's accusations has caused Colleen's name to trend on Twitter with people sharing their thoughts. I'm sending so much love to you right now and to all the victims that hasn't came out. Come out whenever you're ready, but know that there's gonna be thousands of people here to love and support you. Another added, I'm so sorry you were made so uncomfortable. I hope that she does eventually address things because it's the least you all deserve. Another wrote, holy effing S. This is disturbing. If this was a man, y'all would have no issue calling him a predator. Colleen Ballinger is a predator. 
after. She has this child's legs spread open and is looking down grinning. The girl has to cover herself before she stands up. This is not okay. How do you address these mounting facts? How do you address something as horrific as exposing a minor's body in front of an audience of people? You cannot apologize for something like that. Apologizing is just not enough. How do you apologize for something like putting a minor to work for free and emotionally manipulating your child fans, asking them questions like, are you a virgin? What's your favorite sex position? Asking a minor a question like that. You can't apologize for something like that. I don't think you can. So what can you do? Your career is over. It's done. And I mean, all of this that we just discussed, that would be enough to say Colleen needs to step down from the public eye and focus on her personal life. Go to therapy. Offer to pay for these people's therapy at the very, very least. But it gets worse than this. Before we get into some other calling controversies, I want to show a video from a fan meet and greet to show how young her fan base is. Since the most recent controversies have come out about Colleen Ballinger, it made me want to take a look back into her career and do some research and see, has the writing always been on the wall? Has Colleen Ballinger always been a creep? And the fact of the matter is, yes, she has always been a f***ing creep. This is gonna sound so creepy. This sounds so and the fact that no one saw this is really upsetting to me. And there's been so, so many instances that I can't believe people haven't noticed. So here are some very creepy things that Colleen Ballinger has done throughout her career. In the self-help book that Colleen Ballinger wrote as Miranda Sings, for her fan base made up of mostly children, she had a page about how to make a hot dog that she wanted to make look like a vagina, which in the video she said was because she's a perv. Because I wanted to look like a nasty vagina with blood on it because I'm a perv. In an upbeat video set to like happy music, Colleen Ballinger shares a story about how when she was a child, a dog had to be put to sleep. So this video was circulating around Twitter of Colleen basically saying, when she was a child, she would get randomly angry and explosive. I used to like actually like rip things up or get angry. And at one point she angrily pinched her dog for whatever reason. So I grabbed my dog for no reason, just grabbed the dog and pinched its skin and dug my nails into it. The dog turned around and bit her in the face. The dog yelps, turns around to protect itself and bites me in the face. And I got stitches, I went to the hospital. But when her parents asked her what happened, she said, I don't know, the dog just bit me. And they were like, what happened? And I was like, the dog just bit me. So they had to put the dog to sleep. And then they had to put the dog to sleep because the dog was dangerous to be around. So I murdered the dog. And it was just the way that she was talking about it. So casually with like happy music in the background that made people so uncomfortable. User at vast underscore coffee underscore 674 furiously wondered about who tells a story like that with pride. The user added that they assumed the incident occurred when she was a child, but her lack of remorse was disgusting. Her best friend Corey is sitting next to her, but he just seems extremely uncomfortable the entire time, which of course adds to the awkwardness of the situation. There was also a time in a vlog in which she films the dead carcass of a cat casually. Look what we just found. We found Ada. Look, really they're, they're paws. They're paws. That really might oh, be Ada. No. That actually I think is Ada. I was just kidding, but there's definitely paws. That's a paw. Ew, and that's a separated leg. And a fly. Again, the lack of remorse in this video as well is extremely off-putting. Who casually films the dead of a cat? That's something that you see on like 4chan or weird internet sites, not on YouTube and not by a child-friendly, brand-friendly YouTuber. Then there's the clip of her saying she's not going to give a tour of her house because there's too many leaks in her house. Okay, leave it at that. Leave You could leave it at that. 
but she doesn't leave it at that. She's not gonna give a tour of her house because there's too many leaks and then compares the leaks in her house to a young girl's down there. Roll the clip. You want a tour of my house? There are leaks all over my house right now. Brand new house, by the way. And every time it rains, it leaks. Just like a teenage girl's. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. It leaks so much like a little girl's creases when she watches me. <laughs> like a little girl's creases when she's watching those strange little boys on me. It's really, I can't believe I just said that. You had so many chances to stop saying that. Your body is physically trying to get you to stop saying that. Why did you keep going? Why didn't you just stop? You keep saying, I can't believe I'm gonna keep saying it. Then don't say it. Then there was the time that Colleen went to the beach and attempted to film a little boy who was at the beach and her and her sister are laughing and making different innuendos at this little boy. A little naked child just ran up to me, a little boy with a little pee. Um, he's laying on the sand right now. <laughs> I'll try to get him. Um, I don't know if that's him, if you can see that. He wanted me to blow his bubbles. That sounds really dirty. No worries, they were actual bubbles. Yes. That's she <laughs> blew. At another one of a Miranda Sings live shows during a segment that Miranda Sings would do where she would pretend to go on dates with children, she puts cheese balls in her pants and then has the young boy grab the cheese balls from her pants. <laughs> And so now, watch this. We're on the date, James. It's really romantic. Oh, we're getting close and personal. Oh, but I'm so hungry, James. Hold on, I got a snack. <laughs> Was this in your self-health book? Was this in my self-health book? Was it? Because I brought self-health with me and I was just wondering. Well, shouldn't you know if you've read it? <laughs> I'm just kidding, James. I'm just kidding. I'm not I'm just kidding. So, oh, Do you want a cheese ball? Um, I'd love them. I can't believe I'm reaching in there right now. <laughs> With the amount of parents that are in the audience, with the amount of adults that are on that tour, you would think that there would be people that are asking more questions like, hey, maybe we shouldn't have a freaking child reaching into a 30 year old woman's pants, maybe. To add to the overall well-roundedness and loveliness of Colleen Ballinger, here's a video of her and her friends making fun of and kind of harassing a homeless person. Come on, Matt. <laughs> There's someone here disturbing their slumber. Guys, don't let this happen to you, okay? We're here. <laughs> Colleen has posted a lot of videos with very strange, concerning thumbnails where you wonder what audience are you trying to target here? Like this thumbnail with the text saying how to ride a child. Another thumbnail with text saying I'm a file. Some of the strangest content that Colleen has posted over the years has to be the content that she's posted alongside her sister. Videos like sisters do the chapstick challenge side eye. Colleen made old gestures with the end of a microphone into her sister's mouth one time while her nephew watched on her lap. Her and her sister did a very racist video. Ah, I'm Carita. I am Rosa. This is my cousin. Mm -hmm. So we work at the taco together. Of course, but um, I am soon to be a manager. Your eyebrows look really good. Did you? I don't have a liner today, so I had to use a jar. Oh, you had to use a jar thing? She also did edible underwear challenge with my sister. Testing Jojo Siwa bath products in the bath with her sister. Jojo Siwa was a child at this time, so love that she involved Jojo Siwa in that. Bathtub story time with her sister. Guess the body part challenge. Twister with my sister. Why? Why? 
Colleen has also used the children in her family as clickbait in an inappropriate way on her channel. Girl on girl action. Xmas vlog 2 with a child from her family on the thumbnail. Pole dancer. Xmas vlog 11 with a child, a girl from her family in the thumbnail. On top of what Colleen Ballinger has posted with her sister and the thumbnails Colleen Ballinger has posted of her nieces, recently there's been very, very concerning allegations against Colleen Ballinger's brother, Trent Ballinger. So it seems overall there's a collective concerning pattern within the Ballinger family, which makes you wonder and what has been normalized within the Ballinger family system for many of these things to come to light recently. And it also makes you wonder how much more is going to come to light within the Ballinger family in the future. Here's a clip of Colleen saying if she was Santa, she'd want the girls from Dan's moms to sit on her lap. If you were Santa, name three people you would want to sit on your lap. <laughs> This is gonna sound so creepy. My answer is so creepy, but I don't mean it to be creepy. I were Santa, I would, this is gonna sound so bad. I can't admit this, this sounds so pedophilish. I would want the girls from Dance Moms. It sounds super creepy, but it's totally innocent. I just think they're adorable and super talented. And I'm in love with them in a very sweet babysitter child sort of way. That still sounds creepy. Please, Colleen, don't put this online. And then she would go on to collaborate with Jojo Siwa in multiple videos. So that's cool. That's fine. Jojo, okay. You cannot do that. Why not? That will entice all the people. And then last but not least, this is the most disturbing video yet. I have no idea what's going on, but basically Colleen and her best friend, Corey, in these alter egos, Sam and Labia create these boxes that are filled with innuendos. I love the flesh tones you're using on your box. I put some beach balls on my box. Like, you know how much you love balls on your box. Ooh, I love balls on my box. I love balls on my face. Now comes the fun part. You need to cut a nice little slit in your box so that your loved one has a place to put all their fun things. I want mine stuck full, so I'm gonna do a large slit. And I like things a little bit more tight and put together, so I'm gonna make a really small slit. If you want to make sure that your slit is nice and smooth, just take a fun little note and move it in and out of your little slit, like so, to loosen it up. Why didn't I put my finger in? Yeah. Oh my god, I think I'll just eat it out. And this video was a video that they felt was okay to post to an audience filled with mostly children. I cannot explain how utterly disgusted I am with this. This is exploitative and this is this is gross, this is disgusting. And after doing all these gross things to these boxes, creating these slits in these boxes, making them, them look a certain way, they offered this box as a giveaway. Well, we have a special little surprise for you today. We're going to give away my box. We won't be giving away labias because it's a little too special to me. I'd like to keep that for myself. But if you'd like to win my box, Labia and I will put some fun little notes in it for you. And all you have to do to win is subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and click on the link in the description. They offered this box as a giveaway to their child audience. So you can't even say that giving away this to Adam was a mistake because you gave away this looking box as a giveaway. What the heck? So I don't even know what to make of all of this. The pattern is undeniable at this point. I could theorize all day about Colleen's mental health, her condition or whatever, but I'm not a mental health expert, so I'm not gonna go there. All I'm going to say is this is not normal behavior and I think she needs serious help. And my heart hurts for the fact that this has gone on for such a long time and she has projected this behavior onto so many children. But I also do think personally that this has been deliberate behavior. I do think Colleen posted material like this as a way to draw in a child audience. 
I think certain YouTubers who have a mainly child or young teen audience will at times post inappropriate content as a way to appeal to that child audience. Because think about it, when you're younger, what type of content do you want to watch? You want to watch content that makes you feel like a grown up. You want to watch stuff that feels risky. And I think influencers that appeal to children have learned this. They learned that children want to feel like big kids when they watch child content. So they've tried to appeal to that. When from the outside looking in, when you're an adult watching this content, you can see it for what it is. You can see it for being creepy. Sure, children may want to always feel older and more mature than they actually are, but who tell them that they're mature for their age are just creepy. And if you're introducing children to content that they're too young to understand, then you are a creep and a per And lately, more and more people have been raising questions about Colleen Ballinger's cancer charity. So now even her charity endeavors have come into question. There's been a lot of questions about Colleen's childhood cancer charity fund. So um, I'm using the hashtag of voice for kids. And we should be trying to raise money and awareness for every type of cancer and beat this stupid thing um, because it's not fair. And it's especially not fair for children. I'm going to cry. We just started, <laughs> but it's not fair. Adam McIntyre also alleged in his video that the childhood cancer fund Colleen may be promoting on social media is corrupt. I've unfortunately been reached out to by a couple people who've been involved in Colleen Ballinger's childhood cancer fundraisers behind the scenes. I will not share the text that I have received because unfortunately some of the people are not even here anymore. But there is so much shady shit that is being talked about right now that will come out about her childhood cancer fundraisers. Now, of course, many rich people use charities as a form of a tax write-off, basically a business strategy for themselves and not something that they do out of the goodness of their heart. However, even those rich people are usually donating their own money. But Colleen collects donations from her fans and uses them as a tax write-off, which in itself is morally ambiguous. In Adam's expose, video, he vaguely mentions some information that's been alleged about Colleen's cancer charity fund, but how he didn't feel comfortable sharing that information, and instead he wanted Colleen to post how much she has donated to what specific cancer charities over the years. I would just like Colleen Ballinger to please, please post the receipts of every year the exact amount of money she donated to the exact organizations. That's all I ask, please. That is all I ask, is all I ask. Because the money goes into her bank account before it gets donated and it sits for months. Because the financials of it all have become very muddied. According to r slash Colleen Ballinger snark, the main reasons the financials have become muddied is because Colleen uses a page called Fundly to make her donations. Fundly uses a payment processing platform called Stripe, which sends the money through your personal bank account. And then you personally send the money to whatever charity you choose. And the charities that Colleen has sent the money to have not been specified. For example, in the year 2021, 266 $6,350 were donated by fans and no charity was listed. On top of that, Colleen says she uses Fundly because Fundly allows her to do giveaways, but there also seems to be some issues surrounding the giveaways and whether or not the way she runs the giveaways are even legal. r slash linea underscore borealis has previously pointed out that the method of selecting winners must be specified with the giveaways. Colleen does doesn't specify how people are winning these giveaways and whether or not people have an equal probability of winning the charity giveaways that Colleen is running. I'm gonna find someone to win the Taco Bell gift card. Now you can either donate money 
or you can just spread the word about the fundraiser, about the live stream. Anything that helps with childhood cancer wins the prize. A very well-written summary surrounding the charity was written by r slash Colleen Ballinger Snark. They really dove into all of it and had a well-rounded outlook that I wanted to provide in this. We want to remind readers of this subreddit that the following are allegations and have not been proven. The lack of transparency from Colleen and her team give cause for concern and raise important questions that should should be disclosed without hesitation. Below is a summary of issues that have been raised by those within the subreddit and those who donate to Colleen's annual childhood cancer fundraiser. We have linked articles from the subreddit with further information and commentary. There has been a lot of speculation and questions about how the fundraiser is set up. Firstly, we would like to clarify that despite claims stating Colleen is stealing all of the donation money, we know this is not the case. A large donation is made to Children's Hospital of LA and or family reach each year. This information can be found in their annual reports. She is usually listed in the 100,000 plus bracket as making a donation as herself and or as her business, Miranda Sings LLC. We acknowledge this and any other claims stating that we believe all of the money being stolen is simply false. The main issue is that the exact amount she donated is never disclosed. At the time of writing this, Colleen has never provided evidence that the entire amount raised is being donated. Both CHLA and Family Reach have options to donate directly, set up a fundraising page on their websites, or donate slash fundraise through Tiltify One. Many YouTubers and streamers use fundraising platforms that are created or encouraged to use by specific charities. But each year, Colleen chooses to use Fundly, which is not an option publicly provided by the charities and organizations. Thus, the donated money goes directly to Colleen's bank account. Colleen's 2022 Fundly page also doesn't explicitly state which organizations the money is being donated to. Furthermore, by using Fundly, a percentage of the money is taken by the payment partner, Stripe. So we don't know if Colleen is replacing that lost money. According to the website, it says our payment partner, Stripe, takes 2.9%, plus 30 cents per transaction for credit card processing. With all these resources, why is she unnecessarily acting as the middleman in this fundraiser? There are speculations that she's using the fundraiser to lower her taxes, taking the cost of prizes and postage out of the donation amount, or possibly not donating every penny raised as she claims. Again, these are all allegations that have not been proven. The fundraisers for the previous years are also still open and available to be donated to, which raises the question, if someone mistakenly donates to the wrong year, which can be seen happening in her 2021 Fundly page, who is keeping track of that money? How are we sure it's going to a family and organization in need? Long-term friend and employee Corey DeSoto made several comments on TikTok in response to someone questioning the money donated, being so bold as to say, quote, wow, what an idiot. You do the work. Call the families that watched their child die. He went on to Twitter posting screenshots of this exchange. Shortly after that, he replied to other people on Twitter with the same malicious tone. He ended communication with fans by making this cryptic tweet. On January 6th, DeSoto deleted his TikTok exchange from Twitter, and as of now, he has made no other public attempt to communicate with anyone on the platform. The fact that he is being incredibly defensive, manipulative, and unwilling to be transparent makes it easy to believe that there is something going on behind the scenes that donors are unaware of. Stating that he knows the truth means absolutely nothing when it is not his money that is being donated. Additionally, there are claims that the way Colleen selects the winner by scrolling through Twitter and picking the most active fans is unfair and violates the rules of how prizes and giveaways should be organized. Some fans who have won giveaways also claim they've never actually received their prize. In short, well-intended people are willingly giving their money to a stranger, blindly trusting that she will be honest and donate all of the money she raises, without proof that only Colleen can provide. These donors are left in the dark. This is unfair and unprofessional, as many other influencers post their receipts to the charities that they host fundraisers for. Why can't she? Colleen Ballinger is possibly taking advantage of young fans who have developed parasocial relationships with her. 
Colleen needs to be transparent with her audience. We hope all of the money she has raised now and in the past has gone to organizations and families who are struggling with watching their children die, as Corey DeSoto so elegantly put it. Colleen and her best friend and co-worker, Corey, seem to have an arrogant belief that her fans are stupid. That since most of her fans are children, they'll just blindly follow her and not question her actions. But to me, this post was pretty well written and makes it pretty clear that Colleen's fans are not stupid. They're not blind and they're not ignorant. Maybe there's nothing fishy going on with the fundraiser that Colleen has been running for years. But if there is, and you have been asking your fandom, made up of mainly children, to donate money to you for a fundraiser for childhood cancer, and that turns out to contain some fraudulent activity, well then, you are truly and unequivocally the most horrible person I have ever heard of or seen in my entire life. And that will have crossed every boundary or line that there is. So I am praying that there is nothing fishy going on there, but just the fact that there are so many platforms out there that are clear cut and you're choosing to go with a platform that deposits money directly into your bank account tells me that maybe there might be something fishy going on here. The possibility of the Childhood Cancer Fund being corrupt really hurts my heart. I was an ex Colleen Ballinger fan, and I know she's been doing it for years and years. And she gets around 20 to 40K every year around Christmas time. One year, I donated $300. Small amount, I know, but still effed. Now the internet is rallying against Colleen and her future public appearances. In one TikTok, a person who read up on all the Colleen drama claims, YouTube is becoming just as corrupt as Hollywood, and it's scary. Recently, Colleen announced a new podcast with Trisha Paytas dubbed Oversharing. The two friends, though they've never been close, just launched the new podcast on its own channel. Trisha Paytas is known to implode in cause controversy, but people never thought that Colleen would be the one whose career would completely implode and destroy the podcast with it. She has disappeared since this started, right? Yeah. The Trisha pod, the, the podcast she did with Trisha is, there's no word from it. She they stopped, just stopped blogging. Posting. They just stopped blogging. Yeah. And now it's probably looking like the podcast won't go anywhere because I don't think anyone's going to want to see any future projects involving Colleen Ballinger. Recently, Adam McIntyre made a video discussing how a police report has now been filed because of the amount of harassment he's received from fans of Colleen Ballinger. I just can't believe that me, my family, my animals, my friends are all being threatened because of Colleen Ballinger and her actions. So I wanted to come on here and just give you that update. There is now a police report, two police reports, sorry. The East Sussex, you know, they also want to see me. So we're, it's going to be an intense couple days. And all of this has started from Colleen Ballinger's own fan base speaking against me for speaking about my experience with Colleen Ballinger. Which is so disappointing. We've seen this time and time again. With Me Too, there is a public discussion about how hard it is for victims to come forward, especially with allegations against celebrities. And yet we see this young man who's come forward with allegations against a woman in the public eye and her fans who are mostly comprised of young gen z fans are harassing him and attacking him so heavily that he fears his life might be endangered that's so not okay especially when everything he said has been backed up by so much proof and most of it colleen herself has already admitted to the victim blaming is unbelievable i'm not allowing this to happen again it happened to me in 2020 whenever I was like a 17 year old kid and I had to deal with it then. None of the people got any repercussions. I'm not allowing it to happen to myself again, especially when you're starting to threaten my family and my animals and like trying to like dox like where I go on a daily basis and stuff, find him here and stuff like that. I'm not, 
I don't deserve to go through this again. I, don't, I, I literally do not deserve to go through this again, and I'm not going to allow myself to go through it again. I can't see a world where Colleen can recover from this. Her career is destroyed just from the truth of who she really is coming to light. And the craziest thing is the truth was just above the surface the entire time. It was right in the public eye. And there were people who were trying to tell the public about it, but no one wanted to listen or believe them. And my heart goes out to the victims, especially the ones who no one wanted to listen to for so long. Colleen is not getting away with it this time. I thought that Colleen would never speak of this because what can you really say? What can you really say to these victims? What can you really say to your audience and your fans who have been supporting you and who you greatly let down? But in the weirdest turn of events, Colleen uploaded a statement in which she sings to her fans, in which she offers them no apology. I know you wanted me to say that I was 100%. In the wrong well, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna take that route. But instead, whips out a ukulele and sings to them about how, in fact, everyone who's mad at her probably should apologize to her because they're all a toxic gossip train of haters. Entertaining, right? You guys having fun? All aboard the toxic gossip train. You're chugging down the tracks of this information. The toxic gossip train. You got a one way ticket to the population station. Which, of course, because, you know, I'm making this video, I think it's obvious to say that I couldn't disagree more with that statement. I think it is essential to raise awareness on the dangers of power imbalances that content creators can have, especially with children who look up to them. But instead, with Colleen's statement that she made where she had the one opportunity to do self-reflection, to look at her many, many years, more than a decade online, where she accrued millions of dollars off of millions of people who looked up to her and reflect on any possible harm that she could have done to people. And instead, she took an opportunity to completely victimize herself. Let me tell you, it's not very fun to have millions of people all over the world call you the most vile, horrendous, disgusting, life-ruining words that a person can be called, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't matter that these things are true. She didn't stop for one moment, for one moment, to empathize with the people who told their stories of their experiences with her. She didn't stop to think about any hurt she could have caused and only spoke about all the hurt that she feels other people have caused her these past few weeks. All I can say is this video was a big wow. The only possible valid point I could say is when she said that Miranda Sings is rated PG and that it's up to the parents to decide what they let their kids watch. Uh, I also wanted to take a minute to talk about that girl, Miranda Sings. You know the one. Yeah, her. Oh, she's PG-13. It says that on my website and it's always been that way. I've always relied on parents to decide if they're comfortable with their families watching my YouTube videos or coming to my live shows. At the end of the day, when you look at her fans, most of her fans are children. And as a content creator, she has a responsibility to those children to be mindful of the content that she's making to those children and what she's exposing those children to. And then she has a responsibility as much as those parents. She can't wipe her hands clean just because these alleged parents aren't being mindful of what they're showing their children. The story that this video paints is Colleen trying to say, I just talked to my fans in a few group chats and blurred a few boundaries. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way, like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a 
loser kind of way. I was just trying to be besties with everybody. And I hope that my video shows that Colleen's response video is trying to twist the narrative. I've been sharing my life online for 15 years. I've poured my heart out to you and because of that I feel like I'm talking to my friends, but in the beginning of my career, I didn't really understand that maybe there should be some boundaries there. There were times in the DMs when I would overshare details of my life, which was really weird of me. I haven't done that for years, you see. And that this narrative of, oh, I just talked to my fans in group chats a few years ago, and that was a blurred boundary. That was one mistake. Because when you see her thumbnails, her videos, her live performances, Adam, Becky, and John's statements, as well as so many other former fans' stories, you can see that it's so much more than what she's addressed in this video and such a larger issue than what she's trying to paint the story as. She's trying to twist the narrative and let's not let her. So overall, this response video was bizarre, strange, unnecessary and doesn't even come close to cutting it. I'm sure for some fans who already wanted to forgive her, this will be enough, but for most people, this was just the nail in the coffin. It is mind-blowing to me that this insidious side of Colleen was there the entire time, lurking just below the surface. And yet everyone wanted to believe that she was this squeaky clean, child-friendly celebrity. It now makes me skeptical of any influencer who presents themselves in this manner. I don't even question whether or not Colleen is a bad person. Colleen is a horrific person. Person. It's shocking. It's disgusting. And I'm borderline nauseous after making this video. And now Colleen Ballinger has ended up as the next Shane Dawson. And now I'm terrified to find out who will come next. So I will end this video with a quote from Shane Dawson describing Colleen Ballinger. Because the fact that throughout Colleen Ballinger's career, Colleen Ballinger and Shane Dawson were close friends all along should have really told us all we needed to know. So here's what Shane Dawson has publicly said about Colleen Ballinger. Colleen is the best. She is the most hateful, shadiest. I love her. Whenever we hang out, literally the first words out of her mouth are, okay, what do you got? Who do you hate? Who's next? Just going in on everybody. A lot of comedians in general, a lot of the comedy comes from hate self-hatred. When you hate yourself, you hate everybody around you. He claimed that Colleen was nice to YouTubers' faces, but a different person behind their backs. She's so good at being nice, she'll do collabs with like every YouTuber, and they'll think they're Colleen's best friend. Colleen goes beyond mean girl, beyond predator, beyond hateful, beyond insidious. Everything I have heard about Colleen from multiple reports, receipts, and accounts all paints a picture of a despicable person. She knows how to build personal relationships with people to get what she wants out of them, whether it's personal favors, likability, parasocial relationships, donations, or to be an online soldier on her behalf. But from all accounts, Colleen is a master manipulator. A who utilizes mostly children to do her dirty work, who reeled in children through creepy posts and strange content, and who spreads lies and hate with everyone she talks with, stabbing people in the back the second they stop doing favors for her. But the thing is, I think the reason why she hates her fans so much, and everyone who's nice to her, is because she cannot possibly understand why anyone would be nice to her. She hates her friends and fans so much because more than anyone else in the world, she hates herself. She hates who she is who she has become, what she does to people. She knows she's a pathetic human being and she cannot fathom why anyone would like who she is. So she hates anyone who likes her. And now, now that the truth of who Colleen Ballinger is has come out, she has completely destroyed her career.
Thank you, MD Hair, for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the link in the description and use my promo code for 70% off your first month. Thank you.